1912, Democratic President Woodrow Wilson's administration began a racial segregation policy for U.S. government employees, and by 1914, the Wilson administration's civil service instituted the requirement a photograph be or submitted with each employment application. Read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars because it is a program of manipulation, enslavement, and genocide, and it's without mercy. Right now, I'm going to just read a quote from Edward Mendel House and what he had to say in a private meeting with Woodrow uh, Wilson, president between 1913 and 1921, from the private papers of Woodrow Wilson. Quote, Very soon, every American will be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people, and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging. By such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as chargeback for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living. They will be our chattel, and we will hold the security interest over them forever by operation of law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly delivered the bills of lading to us, will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent forever to remain economic slaves through taxation secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given commercial value designated to keep us a profit that will be none the wiser. For not one man in a million could ever figure out our plans. And if by accident one or two would figure it out, we have in our arsenal plaus plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and pledges. This will inevitably reap us huge profits beyond our wildest of expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud, which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur, and in this manner, every American will unknowingly be our servant, however begrudgingly. The people will become helpless without any hope for their redemption, and we will employ the high office of the president as our dummy corporation to foment this plot against America. Having established plausible deniability, even if people become enlightened that they had a remedy and pursued it, the attorneys, judges, and legislators could claim that they did not understand the people's claims, especially if the technical requirements for achieving it were not followed pursuant to statutory requirements. Requiring the public schools to teach civics, government, and history classes out of federally approved, politically correct textbooks written by the publishing houses owned by the owners of the Federal Reserve would assure that the people would not discover the remedy for a long time, if ever. I would recommend that everyone read Fruit from a Poisonous Tree.
spent four days shredding the leftist straw man. They, the left creates the straw man that we're a systemically racist nation where cops are running around intentionally trying to find black men to shoot and climate change is gonna kill us all in 10 years so we need to socialize every part of our economy. Options for you. I can tow your vehicle. There's a no tow law. Home, or you can leave it parked here, get it registered, and then leave with it once it's registered. And as far as I know, you come back as nobody, so you don't have a driver's license. You have to have that in the state of Nevada to operate a motor vehicle. You are an officer, you did take an oath, right? I did. Okay. For a warrant or something, is that why you don't want to give it to me? No, I gave you my name. Do you mind if I use that to find out who you are then? I live by Watch the, cat. the common law. Anywhere in the United States, if you've been arrested, and I run you and say it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it would say that you've been arrested for this and it would pop up at you as a person. I don't, I don't blame you. Okay. I don't but if blame it comes you. back that you're a person and you have a record. Or people. You really can't hide behind legal fictions this time. I'm not driving, I'm traveling. There's a difference. Okay. I'm not committing commerce you're on, you're on, the, on the highway. You're on and you're driving. Listen, do you have a name? Yeah, but I don't wish to okay. give it. Here's the deal. You want this to go easy, you can get a traffic citation, and then you'll be on your way. I didn't commit any traffic violations. You're gonna get, you're gonna go ahead and uh, provide that information for me so we can get out of here? If you don't provide the information we need? Yeah. There's a likelihood you'd go to jail. I am not driving. I am traveling. There is a difference. What's the difference? This is as far as it goes, officer. I'm traveling, officer. What does that mean? I would like counsel present. You under arrest? I'm in a const I'm in a You're custodial detained? detained. Yeah. Sure. I understand that. Where are you from? Do you have a driver's license? I'm not driving for commerce, officer. I'm not driving. I'm traveling. You're operating a motor vehicle, correct? I'm traveling. Are you operating the motor vehicle? I'm traveling officer. What does that mean? Define traveling. Traveling? I mean, you should know this. Then let's stop deflecting my questions. And let's just get straight answers, okay? I'm giving you a straight okay. answer. Are you operating a motor vehicle right now? No, I'm just well, traveling. state that you said you're from, mm -hmm. you have to have a driver's license to operate a motor vehicle. That's for I've researched all of this for over a year. Okay. And driving is considered in the Black's Law Dictionary, driving for commerce. Define driving for commerce. Um, what you're doing right now is you're driving for commerce. So you're not going to give me your driver's license or nothing like that? I, no, officer, I'm not. Okay. Hang tight for me, okay? Huh? Second time I've been stopped. Officer. Okay, so you're not going to remove that? Let me see that VIN number? No. Okay. Okay. Do you have an ID on you? Do you have a driver's license? I do, but I'm not driving for commerce, but I don't have it on me. You don't have to have a driver's... Why don't you have it on you? Because I'm not driving for commerce, I'm traveling. I'm not acting in a commercial capacity. In this state, if you don't obtain a driver's license and show me, you're, you're resisting or you're obstructing, okay? You gonna give me a name or anything? Uh, no, officer. No. You have to have a driver's license. I'm not driving, officer. Are I'm traveling. Detained? Okay, you're not understanding me. Now, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this again. We can we can do this the easy way, or you can push the limit and you know see where it goes. But here's the deal: you gotta show me a driver's license, okay? 
I'm not driving in commercial capacity, this officer, so I don't have to show you my driver's license. I have a right to travel. Mind if I need to pull you out of the car and need to talk to you? No, officer. It's not gonna happen? Mm-mm. So you're gonna give me a driver's license? I'm not driving you're in commercial. Give me a name? I'm not driving. How do you make things so difficult? I'm not making it difficult, officer. I'm just exercising my rights. And these are your rights under what? Okay. You want this back? Yes, please. Okay. You have a good one, okay, dude? Is that it? Yep. Thank you. Wait, what? Bruh. That's how you do it. Having established plausible deniability, even if people become enlightened that they had a remedy and pursued it, the attorneys, judges, and legislators could claim that they did not understand the people's claims. This is a matter of state versus Marvel. The district court judge arguments or suggestions as to why you believe the court did not have jurisdiction. I recall that one of them in particular was citing that the court and the state were a corporation. So I indicated that prior to the trial date that's now scheduled, I will give you an opportunity to be heard. I don't know why I'm here. I don't I want to know who brought the claim against me. Who are they? And it says, quote, if any person, blah, blah, blah. If any person, blah. I'm not a person. And an actual, that's what's entitled. Rights of the American citizen. I'm an American citizen. I'm not a United States corporate slave. Can you explain to me what you see as the difference between those two? One is corporate jurisdiction. And the corporation is the state of the The corporation is the state of New Hampshire. Right. And, and I happen to be an elected member of the board of directors of that corporation. And the corporation has part two as its charter. So part two of the New Hampshire Constitution is the charter of which I have to be on the board of directors of. Okay. And do you agree that the board of directors has the authority to enact laws? No, they don't enact laws. They enact public policy. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Okay, when you say Constitution, are you talking about the federal Constitution or the New Hampshire Constitution? I go back to the question of the difference between an American citizen and a corporate citizen. That's so right. I understand that you're saying a corporate citizen is one who follows the board of directors public policy. Is that, am I understanding that piece? Backwards, what would you define an American citizen as? The United States Constitution Act defines the two, the two uh, classes of citizens. And that's the 92 U.S. page 544. That's where you get the definition. That's sovereignty. A sovereign, unless the sovereign is named in the public policy, he is excluded. And what do you mean by that? I don't understand what that the sovereign is the people? Absolutely. No, the sovereign is the individual. Okay, so each individual of America. Each individual is a sovereign in of himself? Absolutely. And so then you're saying that each sovereign does not have to abide by the public policy of the corporation of the state of New Hampshire? Absolutely, because there's no instrument. There's no instrument to guide the sovereigns. Aren't the statutes of New Hampshire the instrument that guide the sovereigns in the state? The Uniform Commercial Code requires a contract, okay, an that's, instrument, that's my second and it has to be fully informed. There has to be a meeting of the minds right. for the contract to exist. Okay, so can you just help me understand your argument with how the UCC controls someone's driving in New Hampshire? Oh, no, I'm a traveler. The right to travel existed before governments were incorporated. 
It's a brief on the right to travel. So are you saying that right, right to travel includes operating motor vehicles? No, you use the word operating, no. I'm talking about two different things. An automobile, as the Supreme Court has confirmed, is not taxable. You don't have to pay any taxes to your town for an automobile. You do for a commercial motor vehicle. I'm still hung up on something that you said earlier. Okay. About travel versus operating. If someone's driving a car, all right, there's a motor vehicle that's on the on the street and it's being driven by someone. Are you saying that that person who's driving is just traveling through with it? I I, no, I'm not saying they're driving. They're traveling. You're saying that nobody's driving the car. The motor vehicle only has motor the product only has jurisdiction over the commercial traffic on a public way. Right. And so they have total the jurisdiction there. They have no jurisdiction right. over a private automobile. And so if you instance, lose a self-propelled conveyance okay. on the public way for a profit or a gain, then you are subject to what the motor vehicle department, you have a license, and they have jurisdiction, but, you're but they have no jurisdiction over me. So that is all personal. You do not need a license, because you're not in commercial use of a highway, and you don't have to have a registration. It's consumer goods. Consumer goods do not require any registration. So consumer goods do not require a license to control them. You're talking about commercial vehicles versus the pleasure vehicle. It does not it's not a vehicle, it's an automobile. So you're playing word games, I believe, if you excuse my expression here. You're talking semantic subterfuge. Well, I, I'm trying to learn what your argument is. I'm not making a ruling today one way or the other. That's why we're having this discussion, so that I can fully understand what your position is and give the state an opportunity to respond as well. So let me just see if I understand it. Government is a corporation. They have no, they, they make public policy, but that is not enforceable to the individual sovereign. You use the word license, and you know that a license is something that government gives you a privilege, a convert, a right into a privilege. That's good. You cannot, you cannot license a right and charge a fee for it. Because the right to travel existed before governments were created. How is that related to whether this court has the authority to determine whether you drove after your license was suspended? When you say the word motor vehicle, are you talking about a horse and carriage? 